The late, great Yogi Berra used to say that in theory, there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about, is the practice of intervention, because as I look at my fellow debaters this evening, pro and con, I realize that I'm the only one who's actually had the experience of being involved in intervention operations. And so I talk to you from the view of a soldier. And believe you me, it is the responsibility, it is where the responsibility falls to soldiers, when diplomats and those who want to do good things, without question, for good reasons, scream that we must do something. And when you ask what, the answer is sometimes vague, but we must do something. And we always believe that doing something is going to be easy, but you know something, the diplomatic, the legal and the financial pressures that we hear about that should be applied usually don't work. If they did, we probably wouldn't have fought World War II. North Korea would probably be a democracy and Osama bin Laden would be somewhere in jail right now as we speak. Because we are talking about harmed men who operate to their very base motives and who use violence to orchestrate their life, to win power, gain money, and remain immune from prosecution. As a soldier, what I saw was this. The international community, in fact, has shown itself incapable of developing a strategy for any of the intervention efforts that it undertakes. Tactics without strategy, are a variety of roads that are going nowhere and will lead to a very short-term focus on the mission. Let's face it, there is no strategy for Darfur. And in fact, you can't have a strategy to, for Darfur. You must actually have one for Sudan. And really, you can't have one for Sudan because you must have one for the region and the seven nations that border upon Darfur. And actually, what you're talking about now is a grand strategy for that failed continent of Africa. And nowhere in the international community have we seen the capacity or the capability to develop a strategy for the failed continent of Africa, let alone any of the other inclusive strategies to it. It results in incoherence in command and control and how you set up a structure, and it leads to short-term but transitory, or ta transitory tactical benefits that disappear quickly as soon as the troops depart. International cohesion is usually the first casualty uh, from having tactics without a strategy to guide you. Secondly, there are institutions in the international community that are unfit for the present security environment. We've already trashed, I think, the United Nations significantly, but as one of my commanders who was here in the audience tonight once said to me, the United Nations, really, it's lessons observed from all the intervention operations they've had, not lessons learned because they've applied none of them, and in fact, the United Nations, was his comment, could not run a one-man rush to the latrine. NATO is still very much focused on the Cold War and with its command structure reflecting exactly that and 26 to 28 nations operating in consensus and taking even minor tactical decisions that way simply does not work. Who is the individual or the country that can actually put their lips on the putrescent lips of the decomposing corpse of those two organizations and make them capable again? 